Hello, welcome back. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I love reading. I will fall into reading phases where I am chugging through books and then other times I am completely lost and I don't wanna pick up a book, I don't wanna try something new. And oftentimes the barrier of entry is that I find so many books are boring. <laughs> Too many books start off really slow and expect you to keep reading until this massive thing happens like three quarters of the way in the book. And the truth is, I just struggle with that. <laughs> so a couple years ago, I decided to try a new tactic. This is when I finally learned that I had ADHD. I started going into bookstores and going up to the person that worked there and saying, I have ADHD. Do you have a book recommendation for something that is exciting start to finish? Worked like a charm. I found some of my favorite books ever by doing that tactic. And so today I wanna to talk to you about my favorite fiction books that have nothing to do with ADHD, but they are just exciting from start to finish. Let's do it. I will tell you the kind of themes that I enjoy in books. I do love a little smut here and there. Uh-oh, lock me up. <laughs> I also just love a lot of like mystery or murder. A lot of the books that I do like tend to be like suspenseful and really uh, like from start to finish, a lot going on all at once. And that tends to fall in like the mystery, suspense, sometimes horror uh, section. But I tried to pick other books that were outside of that as well. So these are the books in the last five years that I have loved the most. Let's get into it. The first book that I wanna to talk to you about is Dear Child by Rami Hosman. I read this two years ago, and this was a book that I went into a bookstore and said, please tell me a book that from start to finish is exciting. And they did not disappoint. This book from the very start has you intrigued going, what is happening? What's going on? You're confused, you want answers. And it kind of leaves you in that state for a lot of it. We are like, what's going on? I have to know what happens. And I chugged through this in, I think, two days, which tells me that it is a suspenseful, highly uh, readable book. So the gist of this book is that a girl has gone missing. Many, 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 many years ago, she went missing. And one day, the parents of this girl get a call saying, she's here, we have found her, she's at this hospital, come get her. And the parents go to find her and see her, and they are not convinced it's her. That is what I'll tell you. Ah, it's so good, I love this book, okay. <laughs> One author that I think does a really great job at building suspense and keeping it there in certain books is Stephen King. He's one of my favorite authors ever. Um, there are certain books that I can't even touch, like The Dome. Show a picture of The Dome. It's fucking huge, and I have attempted to read it, and I got like 200, maybe 300 pages in and had to put it down because there's just so much going on in a negative way. It's too much information. And I know that I like Stephen King's writing. And when I was in a lull and finding it hard to get back into reading, I wanted to find a book that was really short, but interesting. So I got this Stephen King book. It's called Elevation. And essentially the plot is that this man is slowly every day losing weight, but he doesn't look any different. He's slowly getting less and less heavy um, but not physically actually changing. It is possible that eventually he'll just float away. I know that sounds super fucking weird, but in a 100 page book or 140 pages or so book, um, it really pulls you in, brings you into this curiosity of this character and who he is. Uh, yeah, really quick read that will help to kind of ignite you into maybe doing some more reading. <laughs> yeah. Yeah! <laughs> if you know, you know. I'm not the first person that has talked about this book. You've probably read it yourself. If you haven't and you've been like, I don't want to read it because of the hype and everyone's telling me about it, it's a good book, okay? It's good. Are there plot holes sometimes and is it a little stupid? It is. This book is different though than the other books I'm talking about because it isn't necessarily like nonstop action through the entire thing. But the reason that I like this book is because there is this like suspense and this hoping or longing for these two people to be together. And it, it, it just gets you riled up, you know? And you just want to read because you want them to uh. <laughs> So, if you're horny, this is the book for you. <laughs> 
But let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this week's video, The Paired App. The Paired App is a relationship care app that offers daily couple questions, relationship games, quizzes, and exercises. Their mission is to improve the happiness of couple relationships. My partner and I do not have the same taste in books, and that became very apparent over time, but also through the quizzes that we have taken through Paired. It's such a fun and easy way to stay connected to one another and learn more about each other when we're not necessarily together. My partner and I live over an hour apart from one another, and so having meaningful connection every single day can be a challenge, but the Paired app makes this so easy by having us engage through the app together. And with so many things to do within the app, there's always an opportunity to become stronger together even when we're apart. With interactive games, challenges, and tools designed to foster communication, trust, and intimacy. The app has honestly brought up questions I would never have even thought of asking my partner. And so it's created new conversations and I have learned things about even myself by doing these questions and games with my partner. Click my link below to get a seven day free trial and 25% off Paired Premium so you can maintain and deepen your connection with your partner. Thank you again to Paired for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the books. <laughs> this next book that I wanna talk about is called Where the Crawdads Sing by uh, Delia Owens. And this was recently made into a movie so you might've seen it don't watch the movie. Just don't watch it. It's an okay movie. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you've read the book and then you watch the movie, it's disappointing. <laughs> this is so different than any other book that I have read because this is probably the slowest book I've ever read and still been captured by it the entire time. There is not a crazy amount of stuff that happens in this book. Kaya, the female character in this book, is my favorite character in any book of all time. I fell in love with her and I was so invested in her and her story, I had to read to the end. This book does a great job at jumping from the future back to the past and in the future there's a murder trial going on and you go back into the past and figure out more about her and more about this future and it really pulls you in and just beautiful writing, beautiful, beautiful writing. So. Great suggestion. Do not include this in the, this. Don't include this. Don't include this or I'll end your family. Do you see which author there is more of than anyone else? There's one of my favorite authors ever, but she's highly controversial. People don't like her books. And I happen to be someone that really does. There's actually one book of her that I wanted to talk about in this, but I think people hate her so much that I just, there's no point in talking about her. I have two other Stephen King books that I want to suggest and for different reasons. Firstly, look at the tear and wear on this book. Um, it looks like this because I've read it about three times already. This is the first book I have ever read more than once. That's pretty crazy for me. <laughs> End of Watch is an incredible book about Essentially, the criminal in this did this like crazy massacre of a bunch of people and then was like, I have a brain injury. He didn't say that, it just was apparent that he did. But the, uh, the cop going against him believes that he doesn't. And there is this back and forth through this entire book of trying to figure out whether he does or not while a massive crime is going on at the same time. And so, very cool book, would suggest. This other one, this is Stephen King's Everything Eventual. The reason that I think this is such a good book is because it's not a book. It is actually a collection of 14 short stories. Um, and so why I love it so much is that you can fly through a short story really quickly. The first short story in this book, I think of all the time. And it is essentially a man waking up on an autopsy table but he can't move his body, he can't talk, he can't do anything, he looks completely dead to those people, and you're hearing his inner monologue as he is on an autopsy table, apparently dead. It's so interesting, it's so cool, um, and that is one of many, many stories that are amazing. Obi, holy shit, dude, that smells so bad. Are you okay? I already oogled and ogled over a Sarah J Maas book. Um, and for many of you that have already read A Court of Thorn and Roses, you will know that Throne of Glass is the other series that she is very well known for. This book, I would best describe it as adjacent to Hunger Games. It feels very similar to those vibes, but there's also magic involved. There's also this fucking badass assassin woman as the lead in this book. And she's a very interesting character. The second book in this series, Crown of Midnight, I actually preferred to this one, but you do have to read this one to get to that one. So, um, great series as well. I've only ever read like three series, three or four series in my life, and this was the second one ever. So, highly suggest this. Fast paced, exciting, 
Um, yeah, very Hunger Games-esque. Wait, do you want some tea? Do you want some tea on this book? I, do want some tea. I was given this book by a man that I was seeing. And um, after reading this book, I decided I didn't want to be with him anymore. <laughs> The gist of the book is essentially this idea that if you had made different choices in your life, where would you be? If you were able to stand in the library and look through these different options of how your life could have gone, which one would you pick? And the protagonist in this book doesn't want to live anymore, is ready to give up. And she gets this opportunity to look through all of these other opportunities of life that she could have done if she hadn't taken the path that she did. And it's such an incredible story and it really makes you think about your own life and how you want to live, who you want to be with. So sorry about that again, for stealing your book and then breaking up with you. Incredible book. I have forced this book on many people to read it because I love it very dearly. Um, it is fast paced. It goes very quickly through different chapters and it's not that long, which I think is always a benefit if you have ADHD and you want to get through a book. So Midnight Library. 10 out of 10. The last book I want to tell you about is by far the fastest paced, most exciting book I have ever read. I read it in less than 24 hours. <laughs> this is Harlan Coben's Tell No One. I actually did a book club in my Discord for this book specifically because of how much I loved it. The gist of this book. Okay, how do I give a gist of this book? That's hard. Oh, how do you give a gist of this book? Okay, let me tell you and you tell me. Sounds like a combination of the movie Gone Girl and Taken with Liam Neeson. Love that, okay, thank you. In my own words, I want you to imagine that this is a combination of the movie Gone Girl and Taken. And I remember when I was doing the book club with some other folks in my Discord, they were struggling to stop reading between our sessions. And a lot of people just ended up finishing the book between our sessions because they couldn't wait. So if you want a book that's gonna keep you on your toes, you're gonna be like, what the hell is happening? Oh my God, how did that happen? There's so many twists and turns in this book. Um, it is so suspenseful and I absolutely suggest this. This is my most recent, like, you have to read this book to everyone I know. Those are all of my current favorite fiction books. I am wanting to find more, and so if you have suggestions of books that are fast-paced, that are interesting, that don't have this massive lull in the middle of the book, please put them in the comments. I need more things to read. So tell me your suggestions. What books do I need to read? Um, and would you like a different version of this video, but self-help books specifically. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, I am so proud of you for putting in the work to yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. So it's pretty <laughs> cool that you're doing it for you. Love you so much. I will catch you in the next one. And also Obi says bye. Can you see him? <laughs> bye. Don't look at his penis. <laughs>